let's get started. So what does Ignite your travel business? What does that even mean? Like Ignite, you know, actually I am a definition person. So um, I always go to Webster's and uh, try and figure out what a word means. And so what I found is, of course, ignite means to set fire, to set a blaze, get something to burn. And the reason I picked this word for uh, this today's lesson was because I know many of you have probably, you know, over the last year, because we are celebrating this month, a year that the pandemic has officially taken a hold of your perspective, you know, lives, areas, businesses, whatever that is. And the fire is probably gone out in your business, right? Um, you know, I know sales are probably not where you had expected when you planned out 2020. And then as you plan out 2021, uh, things are probably not where you want them to be. So we do need the sense of a reignition or reburning of the fire for our business. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And what does that mean for your business? So wherever you are in your business journey, if it could be you are in the pre-launch phase, you've decided to jump and you haven't done it yet, and you're thinking about the travel business, well, what do we need to do to push you forward? We're going to talk about some secrets for that. If you've already launched your vision, I've, uh, business, I've talked to many people who have already launched their travel business and they um, did it just during the pandemic, right? And you may be a little bit overwhelmed or wherever you are in that business. You may already have launched your business and want to grow, but don't know what to do. So then the thing is, is how do we get that fire burning? So the first thing that we want to start with are what are your goals for 2021, right? You know, they may not have transpired in 2020, but in 2021, we want to make sure that you have at least identified what it is that you want to accomplish, right? So one of the things before I dive deep into this is I want to encourage you, if you are uh, joining us through the Zoom, is to actually leave your questions. If you have any questions that come up throughout this training, post them, we'll be taking them, and then I'll be answering the questions at the end of our session today. All right, so what are your goals? What is it that you want to accomplish? Do you want to launch? Do you, maybe you've launched and you want to get your first customers, right? Maybe you launched in uh, the latter part of the quarter of 2020, December. November and you want to get customers. Maybe you've gotten quotes, but you're not getting sales. Maybe it's sales that you want to get. Maybe you've seen some sort of success in the past pre-pandemic pre-pandemic and you want to um, see more of that, right? You want to see how can you grow your business post the pandemic when things open up and how do you be successful? How do you do that? Whatever your goals are, you want to make sure you're clear about that, right? Write them down. Make sure you understand what they are and maybe you should even share them inside of this training. Let us know what your goals are for 2021. All right, so that's the first thing is, what are your goals and do you have them identified and are you clear about what it is that you want to accomplish? All right, so some of the things that come up when you, you know, when we're in the middle of a pandemic is like, really, should I even launch during this period or should I wait, right? Should I wait until things open up before I decide to launch my business or should I just go ahead and launch? Right. And my answer to that is do it right. If you have the desire to launch your travel business, even in the pandemic, this is the time to do it. There is no time like the present than to go forward with your dreams. The thing that we want to talk about today is what is the best way for you to accomplish that? Another question that keeps coming up with a lot of people that I talk to is, can I focus on growth in a, in, in a downturn, right? Can I make money when uh, things are going bad or when things are not where I want, right? Many people want to specialize in Europe and that destination is closed to the US. So can I really focus on growth in my business? And the answer is absolutely you can. But before we dive into the details of all of that and the secrets that I'm going to share, 
there. Many of you are new to me and I would like to introduce myself. And my name is Sunday Gardner, the online travel boss as I go by. I've been in business uh, training and coaching future existing and new travel business owners for about two years. Uh, this is going on our third year uh, this year, two years. And my focus is to help people who are passionate about travel, operate, launch, and grow profitable travel businesses. And how do I do that? Well, we specifically do that with our team with a training program that we call Travel Passions to Profits, which teaches you some key fundamentals in three areas of your business. Operations, it also teaches you about how to create a sales funnel so that you can get clients, attract strangers to your business, and then about client fulfillment. And so I have about 20 years of experience and launching businesses of all kinds and products. And so specialized in the travel business about two years ago so that I can help people like you who are either on the fence, they've done it, or they want to get to a new level in their business, help them achieve that. Now, here's the deal. You know, I've been in the, I've been a part of the pandemic just like most of you with my businesses and you know what I have found is is that even in a pandemic you can see some success in your travel business and really the best thing that you can do during this time is plan out what you want to accomplish and set sow the seeds of success so when things open up you're prepared and you're ready and all that you have to do is start to execute to your plans but here's some of the things that the pandemic has taught me over the last year, right? Because again, this month celebrates a year in uh, um, being in the state that we are, is that you can you can successfully launch your business even while you're working a full-time job. Many of you are working full-time jobs. You want this to be your full-time thing or gig, um, but you're doing so while you're working full-time. So can you really do it and sort of manage both of those at the same time? And the answer is yes, you can. And so we'll talk about how to do that and how to do it effectively. Effectively. And the thing is, is that, you know, as you know, we've got children that are home. I've got a son right now who's madly upset. He told me the wrong time, which conflicted with this is the reason why I'm late. Um, but, you know, how do you control your time? Um, how do you control all the demands? I'm a mom. You know, just five minutes ago, he's got me in tears because I'm like, you told me the wrong time. I can't get an Uber. I can't get a Lyft. He's really ticked off at me right now. But the point is, is like, how do you control all of those things that you need to balance while you're doing a business. And the thing is, is that you've got to be in control of your schedule, right? And so how do you do that? How do you balance all of those things that you need to balance, right? Particularly if you're in pre-launch phase and you're, you're kind of on the fence and you don't know, well, can I do this? Should I do it? You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. You know, I've got this full-time job. I don't want to lose it. You know, I don't want to divide my time. I've got a couple of my clients who've gotten promotions and they've got to be able to balance the new demands of their promotion and still get their business ready and organized so that they can be successful for long-term, right? How do you do all of that, right? But what I have learned in a pandemic with children home, you know, me trying to be super mom, I've got to be a teacher, I've got to be a, you know, I've got to be the Uber driver, I've got to be the cook, the chef, right? And then still a wife. How do you balance all of that? A pandemic has taught me that one, I'm not as prepared as I thought I was, but two, that it can be done if you've got the right systems and people and resources in place. Then the next thing is, is that you don't have to be on social media all of the time to be successful. So what are the secrets that I learned um, that I've learned not only through the pandemic, but over the last several years um, with launching and operating a travel business? We're going to dive into that today. So again, I'm super excited to be coming to you. We do this sort of special type of training where you register and I pour into you guys. We only do this once a quarter, so I'm glad that you can join us live or you could join us um, inside of our Facebook group. But again, if you have any any questions, we are going to open it up. So I want you to, you know, get, get your, let your fingers do the typing, so to speak, and let's get ready to ask those questions. Go ahead and put them in the chat in the Zoom. We will not be answering questions via the Facebook group. We'll only be doing it through Zoom. So you want to register and come and join us inside the Zoom. All right. So what did I learn over the last 12 months and over the last two years, specifically focusing on the travel business and over 20 years of experience is, right? Do you want to benefit from 
from that knowledge or do you want to learn it the hard way, right? I was hard headed when I started my business, right? I, I thought I was super, super chick. <laughs> you know, I thought I was super woman. I could do it all, have it all. And I didn't need any help. And that was really the roughest way I could go. And many of you all think th probably the same thing is right. I can go Google it. I can get, you know, I can go and get there, do the research myself and everything is going to uh, be okay. And let me tell you, I'm going to give you a couple of cheat sheets that you're going to want to take notes. So the thing that I want to promise you today is stick with me through the end of this. You're going to get some really good, valuable information today, but you know, benefit from the years of experience that I have. I am joined by uh, one of our program coaches, Alto. So she's also going to be doing uh, facilitating and uh, making sure that we get your answers to too, but she's also going to be available along with me to answer any questions that you have so that you can sort of get a little bit of a cheat sheet. But here's some of the things that I learned the hard way, right? Is, is that when I started my business, my physical brick and mortar business, and then I also started my um, online business, did a little bit better when I did online business, but I just launched, right? I am, I am a lover of uh, projects, right? I am a certified project manager and I love projects. So I jumped, right? When I make a decision to start a business, you know, m many years ago, I would just jump and I would just start the business, right? I would figure things out as I go. And that's really the hard way to do things, right? Because there, there's, you know, somebody told me something, I think it was the other day that said, you know, there's not anything new under the sun, right? Somebody has already done or tried whatever it is that you have done or tried. So how do you make that easier for, for yourself by leveraging? those plans that have already been executed and the knowledge that you have. Me, hard-headed, you know, I don't know where you are in the hard-head space, but I launched and many of you that I've talked to have launched without a plan. And that definitely is a hard way. But the other thing is, is that when I did launch, I was working on what I now call busy work because it made me feel good, right? So the hard way is to work on those things and those buzzwords that people tell you are the things that you should be working on. For example, you start your business and you go and you get business cards printed and you go and you get a website done, right? But you've done none of the legwork to really help facilitate you creating a business card or a website, right? You don't really even know what you are about, who you are as a business, what your vision is. You don't know anything about your clients. You don't know anything about what it is that you want to deliver and how you're going to do it better than your competition. And oftentimes you don't even know who your competition is, right? So you're spinning your wheels on things that you know that you've heard seem to be the right things, but you just are spinning, right? You're working long hours without pay. How many of you guys are doing quotes right? And you're not charging fees for that. Or maybe you're charging fees for it and you're still not getting sales, right? People are not booking clients with you. That's what I call long hours without pay. So you think what I need is I need more quotes, right? I need to get more quotes because ultimately those will turn into sales. But if you don't have the right processes in place, you're still not going to get there, right? So that's another hard knock that I had to learn. Many of you are all probably in the same space. You know, some of you too, maybe you've seen some success, right? And I've done that. I've seen success, been successful, have made some sales. And the only way that I could scale it was to work longer hours, right? So, you know, I just had to see more clients, right? I had to see more of the one thing that was getting me sales, right? And I wasn't able to sit back and like enjoy my business. I wasn't able to sit back and enjoy the fruits of my labor. And so the question becomes is how do we avoid all of those hard knocks. Well, let me tell you, the first thing is you got to get it right. Well, how do you do that? And is this the right time to try and, and get it right? And, and, and I'm going to say, yes, it is. Right. So before we go, I'm going to do like a feelings check, right? You know, how are you guys feeling about your travel business right now? You know, let us know in the comments how things are going. How do you feel about the way things are going in your travel business? Do you wish that, you know, um, are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you feeling confused? Or wh where are you at in your travel business? And so let us know in comments, how, how is that going, right? You know, I uh, talk to many people who are interested in coaching um, 
uh, interested in getting coaching from us. And so, you know, we talk to every person that comes in um, beforehand. And so, you know, many people, particularly if they've launched their business in the last 12 months and even pre pre pandemic, you know, a lot of people were expressing to me that they were, they were overwhelmed, right? I just talked to someone just a couple of days ago and she said, you know, I am overwhelmed by the sheer volume of information that's out there. I signed up with my host agency and I cannot even begin begin to maneuver all of the different information that they have given me, right? And so that feeling of overwhelm sometimes gets us, you know, um, gets us, uh, uh, halts us in our tracks, right? And so we want to not be overwhelmed. We want to have a clear direction and a, a clear path. So it's one, the first thing I want you guys to do is one, acknowledge how you're feeling and how do you get yourself out of that? If you're not feeling good or you're feeling overwhelmed, you don't know what, what steps to do. Maybe you know that you've got all these things to do, but you don't know what you should work on first. We want to get you not feeling that way. And today I felt a little bit like that, right? You know, I, I have a process that I follow to uh, get stuff done. And I, you know, I just came back from vacation last week and I started uh, this week and I didn't start with my cadence. And so I am a bit overwhelmed, right? I have, I'm out of, out of sorts, so to speak. And so how do you get yourself back in alignment so that you can get yourself organized and uh, pursuing what you need to do? So, you know, this is what I've learned in the past several years, you know, um, I've helped a lot of people with no experience launch and grow their travel business. I've, I've been able to, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of a lot of business owners' lives to help them see what they want to see. And what I will tell you is that first thing is acknowledging that feeling and getting over that feeling is the one thing that we want to do. And so we're going to talk about a little bit about that uh, right now. So let's jump into the three secrets. Are you guys excited about this? I'm pretty excited. You know, after I just had the emotional breakdown five minutes ago, I'm pretty excited to be talking to you guys today because you guys are a lot more friendlier than my son is being right now. So um, let's talk about what, uh, what, what it means to me to ignite your travel business and what are those secrets that I want to share with you today. And so the first secret that I want to talk to you today about is what is having a CEO mindset and why is it key to any phase that you are in in your business. And the number two is, is that I want you to start with the end in mind. What does that mean and how do we make that happen? And then the secret number three is going to be how do we track the journey, right? What does it mean to track the journey? And I don't mean like get your diary out and start, you know, day one in the life of, right? Really, what does it mean to track your journey and how do we, how do we, how do we get, first of all, get you on the right path so that your journey is, is, as less troublesome as it possibly can be, but then specifically, how do we course correct if for some reason you get off path? All right, you guys ready? Let's talk about secret number one, CEO mindset. Don't transfer jobs. Well, what does that mean, right? I bet you wonder, right? So oftentimes, and I am a big, uh, like I totally had this as a mistake. And so let me tell you what that means. I started a business. We started our uh, barbershop business back in 2006. And effectively what we did is we created another job for ourselves, right? So you are working a full-time job. Many of you, like I said, are working a full-time job and you effectively are creating another job. You're not creating, you know, a lot of you tell me that you want a, a legacy for your family. You want to be a CEO. You've got, you know, CEO, you, you know, a lot of you adopt the, the boss moniker and you're a boss and really, the, the reality is what you've done is you've just you've just employed yourself. You've created another job. And I want to challenge you today not to think of what you are setting on what your business is, is not another job, but really an opportunity for others to work, right? And you create a vision that you are allowing others to excel in their superpower and, and then you're excelling in your superpower. So what do I mean by CEO mindset? So that's one of it. Don't transfer for one job for another. So you're going to leave a job and a boss that you hate, right? Many of you don't like your bosses. Many of you do like your bosses. So I'm not going to always just assume that it's negative because many of you tell me that you love what you do, but you know that you want something for yourself, right? You want something for your family. You want to be in control of your time. You want to be 
be in control of how much money you can or cannot make, right? But the reality is if you don't do it right, you effectively just become another employee. The difference is, is you're the boss of your own employment, right? So how do you switch that around? And so the first thing is, is I want you to imagine what kind of life do you want, right? When you think about starting a business, I want you to put aside the money and the fame because really, you know, owning your own business, if you don't do it right, there's no fame in this. There's no, there's no glory in it. It's a lot of, it's a lot of work and no glory if you don't design it properly. So the question is, is what kind of life do you want? What kind of business do you want? What kind of freedom do you want with the business that you create? So let me give you an example of that. When I first started my business, I um, created a business. I was coaching. I was doing online. When I started my online coaching business back in 2016, yeah, it's been about five years now, I started um, in the space that I was most familiar with, which was uh, the salon industry. So I was a salon coach. And... Um, you know, I know that business backwards and forwards have been in it for some years now and was coaching salon and I was doing the work and I woke up one morning and I was like, I hate this. I absolutely hate this. So effectively what I had done is I created a job that I absolutely hated. I didn't enjoy my clients. I didn't enjoy the work. I didn't enjoy anything about it because I didn't really design a life. I didn't design what I wanted my my business or life to be. So one of the things that I, I want to encourage you to do, and this is this is going to be, you know, sort of one of the hard knocks that I learned is one of the things that I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think about like what you would like the most ideal day would be for you. And so my ideal day is not wait, you know, I wake up at five, I do some meditation for an hour you know, I'm supposed to be trying to get exercise in there. I haven't done that yet. But, you know, I wake up about two hours before and get some me stuff done before I start work, right? And then I work for a few hours, then I go to lunch, and then I end my day at four or five o'clock, right? Except for days when I have these kinds of uh, trainings, right? You know, but that's by design. I am working to try to get to really where I've got a strong team of people who are doing the majority of things that that I don't necessarily like, but that that team is doing those things and hopefully that's their superpower and they enjoy it, right? And I'm focused on this kind of stuff, right? Showing up for my clients, doing training, because that's the thing that I love, right? That's what I'm designing for my business and my life. What are you designing for your business and your life? And you need to understand that, write it down. I'm not talking about just dream about it, but write it down and be super clear about what that is. That is secret number one. Start with what do you want for your life economically and also from a life experience perspective. What kind of life do you want? I don't want to be at my desk 12 hours a day, 15 hours a day, right? And even as my own boss of myself, what I found is that's the way I had designed it, right? I didn't design a support system. I didn't design anything that allowed me but to be sitting here 16 hours a day doing things that I absolutely don't enjoy, right? You are the person who gets to design how your business is going to be and how your life is. CEOs, what do they do? When I picture a CEO, I picture a guy, and I always say that, unfortunately, I picture a guy playing golf, right? Making business deals, right? Uh, you know, not, they certainly aren't cranking the midnight oil, you know, working on a website, are they? Not so much. <laughs> so that's the kind of mindset. So when I find myself doing activities that are not in my superpower, when I find myself doing activities that are not the things that bring me joy, that are things that I'm not, I think, okay, what would a CEO be doing at this, right? When I find myself micromanaging my team, I ask, what would a leader be doing in this situation, right? So it's really about, I've had to switch not my team's behavior or other people. I had to switch my own behavior and my own mindset, right? I want to be a CEO of my company and my organization. I want to provide strategic and leadership direction. I don't want to be doing everything, 
right? I don't want to be working 12 or 15 hours a day. I don't want my team to be working 12 or 15 hours a day either, unless of course that's their thing, but that's certainly not my thing. What is your design for your business and life look like? All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go to secret number two. You guys ready? All right. Secret number two is start with the end in mind. Three areas of your business that are the most critical. And I want you to write these down. One is business operations, right? What is the end of a... So if you had a magic pen and you could talk or have a... a, a, a an up, you know, a business, a travel business that was operating seamlessly, what would that look like, right? In the space of business operations, right? So that means people, are they picking up the phone and they're, you know, getting a, a voicemail that directs them? What does business operations mean to you? And what does the end mean in mind? And how do we get there, right? Let me, I, I'm sort of jumping a little bit ahead, right? The second area of your business that you need to think about from an ends perspective is your client attraction system. How are you going to get clients, right? So I was talking to a prospective client last week or two weeks ago, and um, uh, she was telling me that she had started her business and she had said, um, you know, I am, you know, I'm tired of t talking to my friends and family, which, you know, if you've heard any of my training before, you know, I kind of feel like friends and family are unreliable. And she's like, you know, and I said, I just asked a simple question. I said, so what did you think about when you thought of, of starting your business on how you were getting clients. And she frankly said, I didn't think about it at all, right? So client attraction system is your number two area of your business that you need to think about. What does that look like? Are you taking calls, right? Are you the ones who is going to be taking requests or booking, uh, booking clients? Or do you eventually want to have a team of people that are doing that? What does the end look like for you, right? And then the third area of your business that you really need to focus on is client fulfillment. So you get a client, what is that client experience going to be like, right? What should they feel like and experience at the conclusion of working with you? What does that look like, right? So here are the steps, the four things I want you to think about when it talks about thinking about the end in mind and those three areas of your business. So remember, again, those three areas are business operations, the second area is client attraction system. And the third area is client fulfillment, right? Have you defined a vision for each of those areas, right? And so vision is forward thinking. It's not, you know, what are you doing right now tactically when you have the least amount of money, the least amount of time, but what is the long-term vision for your business and in those three areas, right? Do not forget those three areas. What does that look like? And do you understand how to get there, right? So now that you've defined the vision, how are you going to get there? What are you missing? What do you need? What is it that's going to help get you there? And oftentimes it's not just the what, it's the who, right? It may be that you need somebody who has knowledge greater than yourself in that particular area and you need to go acquire it, right? Or maybe you need to contract with that person or maybe you need to get resources with that, with people who have that expertise, right? So it's about defining the path, understanding what you need to get on the path, understanding what you need to get there, who and what you need to get there, and damn it, get it done, right? So now that you know all of that, secret number two is get it done, right? So I, I am a note taker. I love to take notes, right? So, you know, my mom makes fun of me because I got a notebook. I started a project. I'm like, mom, I'm getting a new notebook. She's like, Jesus, Sunday, you do not need another notebook. And I'm like, oh, yes, I do. I need another notebook, right? So I get another notebook and I'm like, you know, this notebook is for this project. And I, you know, and I just start, I start doodling, right? You know, my ideas, I start brainstorming the things that I want to do, you know, what I want this business to be about or this project to be about, right? And I, I, I doodle all that stuff down and, you know, and it may be like half the notebook that, you know, before I start to get the plan in place, right? When I think about the vision, right? I, I, I think about it, I dream about it and I'm writing it down and I'm writing and I'm writing and I'm writing. And then ultimately, once I get all of that out of my system, then I'm really talking about what's the plan? What do I have? What do I need? What what do I, what does that all look like? Right. And that I love the whole planning phases of projects and, you know, starting your business and working your business. Cause we go through planning in our organization every year. And then, you know, we're refining it every month, every quarter. Right. And so that whole process, I love that process. And that's really what secret number two is about is making sure you know what the vision is, making sure you understand how you're going to get there. And, you know, every day is about you being on that path and making the adjustments to that 
that path based on, you know, where you are, things that are coming up, you know, maybe what you thought you wanted isn't where you need to be or changes or where to have you. But, you know, hopefully secret number two makes sense because really it's about knowing where you want to be and getting there. All right, let's go to secret number three. All right, track the journey. What does that mean? Track the journey, right? And so we are all on a journey or on our own journey for our business, right? We are, we are, like I said, you're either in pre, pre launch, you decided that you want to do a business, but you haven't officially launched. Maybe you launched, maybe you, you know, you've launched and things are not going good. You're still in the startup phase or maybe you're in the growth phase. Wherever you are, we want to track that journey. But what does that mean? The problem is, is that we know what we want, but we don't really know what it looks like or what it doesn't look like. We just know it's wrong and we don't know what to do, right? So the question that you need to always be asking yourself, and we do this checkpoint monthly, actually we do it weekly inside of our team, is what is success or failure and what does that look like, right? So how do you know if you're doing good? right? Well, you say, well, I look at my bank account. I'm not making any sales. So that must mean I'm doing bad. But really, what does it mean to make sales in your business, right? In your travel business, what are, what activities lead to sales and are you doing it and are you tracking it, right? And what, what is good activity versus bad activity? Um, I am, uh, very new to mindset work and uh, working on mindset. And so the other day I was listening to Jim Rohn. Um, I think that's how you pronounce his name. And this guy, if, if you ever get the opportunity to listen to any YouTube and you need some encouragement, Jim Rohn, and it's R R O H N. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He's just got like, there's so much video audio content on his presentations. And one of the things that he, uh, I was listening to the other morning was, you know, what are those things that I can't remember how he phrased it, but it was like, you know, what's busy work and what's like good work and what's not good work. Right. And Many of us are working on the things that are not good work, right? So sales is important, but you know, uh, one of the things he says is like, you know, uh, writing down sales leads and putting them in a database is not good activity, right? The best activity when it comes to sales is talking to and being in the presence of a, of a client, right? Or a prospective client. That's the activity that's the most important. So how do you know if you're doing good in those three areas? is if you're not tracking it, right? So track it, make sure you understand the activities that are gonna get you to success and those things that are just busy work and those things that are busy work, maybe necessary busy work, but things that maybe you should outsource and not focus on and you focus on the big heavy hitters, right? The biggest things that I can work on in my company is vision, right? Strategy, what are the major goals that we wanna do? And then I make sure that I've got the right team of people in place that help facilitate getting there. So that brings me to number two. How do you measure it, right? So let's say sales, client attraction system is really important, right? And that's really around your sales and marketing business processes, right? So I want to make $10,000. Many of you tell me that you want to make $10,000 a month, right? Well, what, how, how many, how are you going to measure that, right? Is it just a $10,000 or just tracking the $10,000? Well, no, we got to break that down. What are we measuring, right? Are you selling services? Are you selling packages? What are the metrics that you need to be managing in order to determine your success or the fact that you're missing the mark and how off are you from the mark, right? So how will you measure your success and your failure, right? And what do you do when it's not working? So what do I mean by that, right? So one of the key metrics that we measure is the number of discovery calls that we have, right? Because those discovery calls lead to uh, sales, right? So if we're not hitting the mark with discovery calls, what are we doing? What are we changing? What do we need to change? What are we evaluating? But if I wasn't measuring that, I wouldn't even know to look at it. I would just say I'm not hitting $10,000 this month, but I don't really know why, right? So then I start chasing after all these wrong things, right? So every step of the way leads to the end of result. So make sure you understand the steps and that you're measuring the steps. So if something is out of alignment, you know where and what to go after to get it back in alignment. All right. So let's, um, hopefully that makes sense. So number three is really about making sure that you track the right things 
that are going to lead you to success. And when things are not working, you understand how to course correct. So let me give you that example for discovery calls, right? So we just had a team meeting today, right? And the question is, is we're not booking as many calls. What is the cause of that? So we actually did some root cause analysis. We made some adjustments in the process, right? And now we're going to measure that and see if those adjustments are going to be beneficial, right? But again, the only way we know to do that is because we've got to track it, right? We're tracking it. We track it daily. I report on it monthly. I'm looking at those numbers and I know how its impact is to sales, right? Another metric that we track is how much ad spend we're spending, right? So if I'm spending, let's say $50 a day and um, that gets me a certain number of leads, right? There's a conversion there, right? Each of those actions lead to a result. And if there is, if that result is not occurring, I know where to make my adjustments. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So tracking the journey in every part of your business is critical and make sure that you track the right thing, right? So again, the three areas is business operations, client attraction, and client fulfillment, right? What are you tracking? What part of the journey are you on in those areas of your business? Are you tracking the right things? Are you course correcting when things when you're not successful? Do you have some way to be able to um, make those adjustments accordingly? All right. I know I went super fast, but you know, here's the thing I want to ask you is, you know, like who wants to be able to create a system of a, a client attraction system on autopilot for their travel business? Who, who out there wants to do that, right? We've got about 20 people online right now. Who in there, let us know in the chat, who wants to do that? You want to create a system to convert and keep your clients happy, right? I want my clients to be happy. I like getting sales. Don't get me wrong. I like, I like the, I like the PayPal bling, right? But what I more importantly love is great testimonials. I love when my clients win. That is really the joy of why I do what I do. When somebody tells me that, you know, they were able to overcome their fear of going live, that just brings a smile to my face, right? Cause I remember how it was for me and for you, the same thing, right? Do you want to be able to build up the, the, the inner strength because it takes a special type of person to be an entrepreneur. It does. It's not for everybody. This is not for the weak at heart because truthfully, if you want to make money, go get a second job. It's so much easier than starting a business, right? So I always say you not only got to know what you're doing to start your own business, you got to be able to build up that personal mental resilience to get through when your kid is storming around upstairs when you're doing a, a training, right? Because things just didn't fall in place the way that they were supposed to, right? You got to be able to be tough and be able to stick through it when, when the pandemic is happening, right? And you've got nothing but cancellations, right? Do you close for business? Do you close for good? Or do you buckle down and you figure out how do you come out of the storm better than you were when you started, right? That's what we want to do. So you know what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open it up for some questions. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for just a second. And, um, I just realized that I didn't have the video on this whole time, so I apologize for that. I'm going to open it up for some questions and see, you know, these three secrets are the secrets that I've known and I've learned over the course of, like I said, two years uh, in the travel business, but more specifically over the last 20 years as a, uh, a project manager, a business consultant, helping businesses get to the level that they are. So, you know, I wanted to do this sort of network. I wanted to ask this one question. We're going to start off with this one question, and then I'm going to give you the opportunity to give some answers. Come on if you'd like. You can post your questions in the chat. But again, I'm only answering questions that are inside of the Zoom is, you know, where are you all who are joining us? Where are you in your business? Are you in the pre-launch? And so let me give you some definitions. Pre-launch means that you are, you haven't actually started your business. Maybe you haven't signed up with the host agency. You're thinking about it. You want to do it, but you haven't actually pulled the trigger on either a host, setting up your business, or you haven't done any of that. Launch is, is you've launched right in the last 12 months or less. Or, and I'm actually going to say last two years, it'll be launch slash startup phase of your business. You've launched your business. Maybe you've seen one or two sales, but the sales are not consistent, right? You don't really have a process on how to get leads in your business and uh, you that's where you are or you're in growth, 
right? You've launched your business. You've seen some success. You've gotten some um, sales. You've made sales in your business, and um, but you want more of it. You want to consistently be able to get clients, um, and you want to be able to do that on autopilot. So where are you guys in your business right now? And then also let me know where you're at. So those who are on with us in the Zoom, where are you at in your business? Like location, where are you located? I'm in Texas. I'm in Frisco, Texas. All right. So, all right. We've got a couple of people who are in the launch startup phase. That's Queen. All right. Queen, when did you start your business? How long ago did you start your business? Now you can come off mute. Um, if you like, and then we've got started with an agency March 2nd. So we've got someone who just started and you're in setup mode and you're in Davin, uh, Davenport, Florida. Kelly, do you, I think this is Kelly who answered that. Do you have any questions about your startup mode? Um, you just launched literally today is the 17th. So you just launched 15 days ago. And by the way, happy St. Patrick's day. Do you all have your green on? I've got my green on. <laughs> All right, Kelly, any questions about the, you know, you're 15 days in. How's it going with your launch? Um, for Queen, you've launched and you're in the startup mode. What, um, what questions do you have about launching? All right, and then we've got... Uh, someone who just started with an agency in July. So you've been in it about a little, um, a little over six months. So what? No, about eight, nine months, almost a year. Um, and you're in the second phase. So you're in the startup mode. Okay. So, uh, I think that's Nunchella. And my eyes are really bad. Nicolia, sorry about that. Nicolia, all right, so what questions do you have about your uh, phase that you're in and how things are going since you started in July? I don't know if I have any questions ready for you yet, but I know that I did um, sign up with the host agency and I started with them, but like you were saying, there's so much information coming at me from different directions. They sent me so much information and it's like trying to get through that information has just been almost impossible. And I think I hit a wall because it was becoming so overwhelming. And I knew to go back to the beginning, but they were supposed to help me um, with like the website. So I had to come up with the logo and the website. And I haven't even gotten through that yet. And I'm just like kind of trying to restart <laughs> well so here's here's some um recommendations so and, and this would be for everyone who's in startup mode and you've pulled the trigger on um a host agency is i want to set the set the record straight and tell you what your host agency's value proposition is your host agency's value proposition is to connect you with suppliers the the reality is is if they're a good host agency they've got access to hundreds, if not thousands of suppliers for you to connect to, right? But you don't want to spend your time trying to connect to all of those suppliers or even a, a huge amount of those suppliers, right? So the way to help get you focused is to focus on identifying what area of the travel business you want to specialize in and who do you want to help. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. Yes. So don't at this point, you know, getting your website and, and, and I, I hate to bust the bubble, but I'm going to, most people think that, like I said, when you start your business, the most important activity is to get that website developed. And the reality is if you don't know the area that you're specializing, you don't know who your audience is, what content are you going to be putting on the website? Right. Right. So your website's not the first important thing. And the reality is you can sell travel without having a website. It does, it's, it's an important thing to have in the future. But right now, if I had to tell, if, if you had like only two hours, you know, this week to work on, what would I rather you spend your time on? It wouldn't be working on your website. It would be working on identifying what area of the travel business you wanted to specialize. Do some market research on your audience, your competitors, understand who, what kind of services you want to offer. Uh, you know, if you did want to specialize in a destination, what, where and what that would be. I would rather you spend two hours doing that than focusing on fiddling with the website. Does that make sense? Yes. 
It does. And that, yeah. So that was one of the first things that we had talked about with the, with the host agency, finding my niche. And I, um, I, you know, it's weird because I had thought I found it and then it was like, no, but I want to do this. No, but I want to do this. No, I want to serve these people. No, I want to serve this group. So it got, <laughs> it started to go left somewhere along the line. So I think what you're saying is I need to go back and find one base, um, one base niche and start right, right there with that one group. That's right. That's, that's absolutely what I would be saying. You got it. <laughs> I would say focus on one area of the industry you'd like to focus on and then identify who you want to work with, right? And get as, as specific as you possibly can. So, you know, I, I always use this as an example, wedding destinations as an example. Um, but it's something that people can relate to, right? If you specialize in wedding destinations to the Caribbean, that's pretty specific, right? Because you know who you want to work with, which are people who are about to get married to so engaged people, right? You know, what area you'll be focusing on. So that will help you, you know, it's the Caribbean. So uh, you can you can identify suppliers that you'll work with in the in, in the Caribbean that have great you know wedding destination venues right so all of that will help you focus so that you're not kind of all over the place trying to figure out what you know which suppliers to sign up with you know I mean there's no reason to do cruises let's say if you want to do Caribbean and you want to do land things right so why spend your time doing carnival cruises and the training right. Okay, perfect. Well, and where are you? And it's Nichala? Nicolia. 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 Sorry about that. Okay, so Nicolia, where are you? Where are you located? Um, Atlanta. Okay, Atlanta. I was just in Georgia last week. Really? Yes. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Nice talking to you. Nice to meet you as well. You too. All right. Who else would like to uh, tell us where they are in their journey? Um, anybody else from Georgia or Texas? I always like to utilize this as an opportunity. Now, listen, this is the time, you know, you're not going to get uh, free advice all the time, right? So take this opportunity to ask any question that you have in terms of what's going on, or let's just talk about where you are in your travel business. Um, and if you're stuck or where you want to be, and let's, uh, we give you some, some recommendations or some pointers in that. Hi, Sunday, it's Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hey, so um, like I said, I just began um, March uh, the 2nd of this month. 15 and, days um, ago. So you're probably the newest person on. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I have a, a tiny bit of experience some years ago um, that was short lived and um, just kind of reignited my passion. Like if you're going to do something, why not be passionate about it? And so it has led me to this space. And so right now, um, I'm just spending time getting organized. I kind of have in the back of my head, ultimately what I'd like for my business to look like. However, um, just kind of launching and telling, you know, a few people on Facebook, <laughs> if you will, um, just kind of getting, you know, hey, I want to do this, I want to do that. And so I recognize that possibly up front, I'll be doing sort of a, a myriad of of pieces of travel work. And I'm okay with that as I kind of build my knowledge base to uh, present the the type of business I want to yeah. present formally. Um, one of the things that they were focusing on is the whole website piece. I'm like, I'm not really technical. So I'll give that to a girlfriend and tell her a few things and I'll make it simple where you come and, you know, hey, you want to quote, click this button so you, I can get your information and kind of build out a, a itinerary for you and send it back um, initially. So I'm just kind of working, uh, trying to organize myself with all of the, 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 the supplier information. And I appreciate um, just kind of the information you gave or the direction. You know, if you understand that this is where you want to go, focus on that, not, not the 100 suppliers. And so I'm just kind of registered probably with 14 at, at this time. I'm probably going to stop right there. Right. You said you registered at 14 suppliers? 14 suppliers. And I'm going to stop yeah. right there. Yeah, stop. That That's a lot. <laughs> you... <laughs> 
So, you know, I just want to give you some perspective of what people were experiencing in the industry last March, right? So let's just imagine you had 14 clients and they were at different suppliers and the pandemic hits in March and you've got people who are out, right? You've got to contact 14 people. Those lot, the, the, the phone, could you imagine having to deal with 14 different suppliers? trying to do cancellations, getting people moved around, trying to get them different whatever, right? So, you know, the most number of suppliers I would recommend any travel professional using or working with is one to two at most, maybe three um, choice suppliers because the, the reality is, is when you select, when you have that few, right? There's fewer points of failure, that's one. Number two, um, that's how you build these relationships with the suppliers. That's going to be your most important asset is your relationship with your suppliers. But if you have too many, right, just like friends, like, you know, some people can say you can never have too many friends. But, yeah, you can because you just divided your time too much, right? You're dividing your business too much. So, you know, if you want perks, you know, it's going to be based on volume. If you want to be able to negotiate higher uh, commission rates in the future, it's going to be based on volume. So, again, if you can bring that in a little bit, create yourself a criteria by which you'll evaluate suppliers. So, so if someone fails, then you can switch somebody out for, you know, that, that person or supplier that failed you or what have you. But I would certainly bring that into one to two, uh, you know, like I said, maybe three, uh, depending on what area that you're specializing. Have you decided what you're going to specialize in? Uh, I'd like to do group and luxury. Okay. And so many people tell me that, that they like to do group and luxury. And so my recommendation for you would be to just, you know, what does that mean? What kind of groups? There's so many different types of groups, uh, so many different people, uh, really bring that in. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Anybody else would like to, uh, ask a question or share before we go? All right. Well, let me let me just uh, let me end with this. So, you know, we our team is really focused on on really one thing, and that's ensuring that our clients are successfully starting their businesses and able to grow at a pace that is where they want to be from a comfort perspective. Meaning, you know, you can grow like you know this. And that kind of growth is very painful, um, right? So particularly if you don't have the right processes in place and you don't have the right team and support and in place and all of that. So one of the things that I did on the last training that we did, I think the last time we did a webinar uh, like this was in January. And one of the questions I had asked on that training was like, you know, if you got 50 new leads today, would you be prepared to be able to handle them, right? So some of you guys have just started could you handle, let's just half that. Could you handle 25 inquiries for quotes today, right? Without having to take off a week. I had some client tell me that they had to take off work for a week, you know, take vacation time because they just didn't have the processes in place to be able to handle that kind of volume, right? So it sounds sexy to grow, but if you're not able to position yourself to grow without it being painful, you want to take that time to do that. So here's my invitation to you all today, right? You know, we talked about a lot of things to ignite your business. Many of you, like you said, are in the startup mode. You can us in the replay, you may be in a different phase of your business. You know, this week we are inviting you all to have a personal conversation with me. And that would be, uh, I refer to that as a strategy call. And what we're going to do is really talk about kind of what your vision is for your business and where there potentially are some course corrections that you can make early on and see if our program, which is our step-by-step -step guide, right? You know, we're only on this call for about 90 minutes and we don't have the time to go over every single step that we go over and Side of the program. But on that strategy call, we can actually take the time and see where are some of your holes and see if we can fill them and if the program is the right fit for you to fill. And so what I will invite you to do tonight is, you know, schedule a call with us and um, with me specifically and see if we can do that, right? So it's about 15, 30 minute call. 
no selling on that call. We're just really trying to see where you are in your business. I invite you to uh, schedule that time with me. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. You, as a gift from me to you, when you join my group, what happens is you get assigned a client success manager. And um, I'm sorry, not a client success manager, a client support team member. And their primary goal is to connect you to existing resources inside of this group, right? So you're part of the travel business, uh, travel boss group. And what we're doing inside of that group is, is I come every week live with training. We have an entire library of training on different areas of the business. And their job is to make sure that they understand where you are in your business, connect you to those resources and make sure that you've got, you know, access to all of the free training that that we've got available. So what I want you to do also is check your messenger, your Facebook messenger. You may have gotten a new request from one of them. Reach out back to them because again, they're not trying to harass you. They're just trying to connect with you to make sure that you've got um, access to the training that we've done in the past, or you could actually schedule a call. I did not, I'm not prepared. Like I said, we just, we had a bit of a, a bit of an issue. So what I will do is I will, uh, I will post inside of the group, the link to schedule a strategy call with me. Um, if you actually post uh, yes to this, I'll have one of our client support specialists reach out to you and they'll get a call scheduled with me um, as well. So you want to look out for a message from Jaylene and she goes by J. Lou in her Facebook or Joe Mar. Um, and Joe Mar, I would hate to mispronounce your name, but Joe Mar and his uh, name is like my son's name, Omar. So uh, what I would love to do is just talk to you guys uh, about where you are in your business and see if we can help you um, any further. If you guys don't have any other questions, I'm going to let you go. I want to thank you again for joining and I look forward to uh, talking with you guys in the future. But before I go, let's check the messages, make sure that there's not... Uh, uh, any questions? So thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. She says there is no selling. Uh, we are just really trying to make sure that we can help you. So it was a pleasure, uh, meeting with you all tonight. And if you don't have anything else, I'll, I'll see you next time. I'll be live inside the Facebook group, uh, next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Central. All right. Have a great night.